right, we are live. What's good, everybody? It's your boy, Politic and Hawk, and delivering another episode of Politic. Um, joining me today, I got a good friend of mine. Yep. Up, uptown representative. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Glock, Mr. Definitely. Glock, Mr. Glockaware, radio representative. <laughs> you know what I mean? He got Fly Day Fridays on Glockaware Radio. Um, Fly Boy Friday Radio, yep. You know what I mean? My my good friend Sam Malone, but you know what I mean? When you're talking with him, you gotta be sipping. So we talking to sipping with Sammy. Sammy, what's good, brother? Ain't nothing, man. This is sipping with Sammy, Sam Malone, Barstool Rug. If you ain't sipping with Sammy, you ain't sipping right. Get your fucking life together. And I'm politicking with Hawk, man. I'm I'm glad to be here, bro. Exactly. Cheers, to Cheers you, man. man. Definitely. Absolutely. Woo. I oh, bet. Man. Indeed. Bet. Before we even, you know, get to the music. And get to the to the radio endeavors. I, mm-hmm. I did I did watch you know your uh sipping the Sammy podcast and mm-hmm. I I recall you mentioning that you know young Sammy was an actor back in the day. Yeah, man. I spent <laughs> a little time on the screen, man. Yeah, t- how, um, how did that come about? <laughs> I stumbled into it. I had wanted to act and I wanted to go to um I forget what it was, that school on Broad Street that everybody went to for acting. What's- and and I um I just happened around the same time I was telling my parents about it. I was an usher at a wedding, okay. and one of the ladies that I walked to her seat was a, a, a manager, agent, and she took a liking to me. And after the um, wedding, she found out who my parents were because she, by happenstance, got introduced to him. And they told her like, "Oh, you know, he's been talking about acting." And she just started getting me auditions, and she put me in acting class and. I did a um NFL commercial, an after school special, a child abuse commercial. It was probably the biggest three things I did, but I didn't do it long because um she passed um not long after that, and I wasn't really, I was playing ball a lot, and I wasn't really worried about trying to find another agent. Oh wow, that's crazy. I should have stuck with it though. It was fun. Oh man, yeah, that, that's awesome. But yeah, when I, when I heard you mention that on the show, I was like, oh really? I said, oh, yeah, yeah. I, I definitely got to ask him a little, a little bit about Bro, that. I used to be doing a lot of stuff that everybody around the way ain't know about, but, like, somebody would find out about it, right. but they just never would say nothing. Like, um, my man used to see me all the time at, at the basketball court, and he called me superstar. That's probably how you heard the story. We was mentioning that. Yeah. And um, nobody ever knew why he called me superstar. People just thought it was just because of me, and it's like, no, he actually saw, um, I think, the NFL commercial during the preseason one time. It was like, that's my guy. And <laughs> Yeah, I never told him. Oh <laughs> uh, no, nah, that that's cool. So mm-hmm. let's let's you know fast forward. You know, you you did the acting, and then eventually, you know, you start you start tampering with music. What was uh what was the the inspiration behind the music? Um, mu- like rap was like my first love. I don't even want to say music. It was like rap was my first love. All I wanted to do was listen to rap and ride my bike. I didn't care about basketball, football, nothing. I skateboarded before I cared about basketball. You know what I mean? Like I did everything but that, but I was really like the music had me. And one summer we had got, um, used to buy singles and on a functify single, it had instrumental on the B side. Right. And we sat on the patio for like two months straight freestyling over functify instrumentals, me fats and, um, gates shout out to them. Um, and we used to do that like damn near every night and just, you know, just figuring out our little thing and that turned into like battling people and then they had me in alleyways battling driveways against robbing them and shoot i went to your block and battled one of your old heads and he killed me like (laughs) i went through all of it and but i just never wanted to be the guy that like when somebody say yo let me hear something you got to do it and i also felt like that's part of it like if you really want to do it you never know who you in front of you kind of do got to do it to a certain extent Right. So I didn't want to disrespect it. So I just never like pursued it early on. Okay. You know? Yeah. But I've been you. rapping since I was 12. Gotcha. Now, um, <clears throat> since, since a child, who, who was your uh, biggest influence influences during that time? Um, LL was my face, my first favorite rapper. And then I know it seems backwards, but then it became KRS one. Hmm. And then there's Jay-Z. <laughs> <laughs> Um, stylistically though, I get my inspiration from different places, but like my, my, the, the, the people that, that made me want to keep listening to them was, was those three at those separate periods. Hmm. Now, 
you know, being it, it was about the age of 12, like how did KRS one catch you? You know, cause that's somebody that's, you know, very lyrical and, you know, at the age of 12, a, a person might just be, you know, into, I don't want to necessarily say toys, but video games, you know, bikes, but yeah. like, like you mentioned, this, you know, the, the skateboarding. So like, how, how did, how did the, you know, the, 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 the love KRS one influence come about? Yeah. It was like KRS one was always who it was. And, I always knew that. But then I saw a video that he was at a live show and he he freestyled for like an hour. Okay. And that made me go back and start digging up on more. And it's just like, until somebody shows me that they can stand in front of a thousand, two thousand, five thousand people and freestyle for an hour, y'all ain't better than him. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I, I really like looked at it like that because I, I put so much value in freestyling back then because that's what we used to do. And that's what I was good at. I didn't know how to write a song back then. I didn't know how to count a bar. Right. So I respected freestylers. Right. So like he he took me over at a time where that was my life. Oh, you know. Man. Yeah, that's that's pretty cool. I I gotta be honest. Like as I get older, I I really start to appreciate like our our older artists. You know, like a KRS One, a Coogee Rap. You know, like like all like I listen to uh like Rock the Bells Radio all the time. So it's like you know. Like, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm glad L got that. Yeah, it, it, it's big, and and that's something I I do want to touch on too a, a little bit down the road. You know, you know, we'll, you know, talk further uh, about your uh, mm -hmm. your, uh, your Glockaware Radio tenure, but um, so you you know you begin rapping about twelve. Uh, what what were you know just uh, you know for, for humor? What were some of your rap names you had back then? <laughs> was it always? Oh man, was, um, was I think my first <laughs> no no no. I think my first name was um shy one. Okay. I know I was J Rock for a while. Um, yeah, those was my first. I remember my first bars was like, "I'm a shy, I'm the shy one, little guy one, five foot ten, or some shit, five foot whatever I was at the time, five foot eight. And like, so then the name became Shy One. It was weird because back then the block used to be jumping. You know how my block used to be, and. Oh, yeah. It was at a time where, like, we was too young to really have a say. You just sit out there and be happy to be there. Right. So, like, all the women used to be like, all, you know, all the chicks, who, who's he? Why is he so shy? Like, so I ran with it for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> like, ran, ran with shy guy. It's like, no. <laughs> yeah, man, I'll be the shy one. Fuck it. Because oh, at the same time, I had a temper. So for people to think that I was shy or, or, or um retracted was actually a good thing for me. Like, it, I'd rather that. <laughs> yeah, hey, look, that, that, that's cool, man. That, that's real cool. So, you know, I, I take it, you know, you probably battled a whole lot, you know, in high school and, you know. I mean, I mean just in different places. It's like I never consistently did it. But if it was a cypher that was like lit, right. I'm in it. Right. You know what I mean? I'm in it. And, but it was to the point where every time I did that, it's like 10 motherfuckers that's like, yo, I ain't even know you spit. Whoa, whoa, let's go to the stool. What's up? I ain't going on. You know what I mean? Like, right, right. and ever since high school, I've really been hustling in different ways that like I was more on money, females and basketball was all I had time for. Right. You know, and um, rapping was just fun. And it was literally fun to be like to have that shock factor to be like, all oh, these dudes really do this. And I'm like, hop in here and bust half their ass right. with just something that I've been thinking about. You know what I mean? Or right. listen to a couple words that they say and just play off of it and run for the next five minutes. Like, it's fun. Right. <laughs> no, I, I but, I, but I believed in like, well, he's son of the two one five now. But like back when when I was in high school, Bills and them was running around, and I believed in Bills. Every time I seen him, he had fresh bars for me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it was like, as far as deserving to get on or to have a push, I always wanted to put my energy behind people like him before I was worried about getting me on. I was like, well, y'all go on tour. I'm gonna write my album on a on a tour bus, and then I'll do my thing. Right. That was my perspective. You, you know what you, I mean? You know what that kind of put me in the mind of? Like, I, I look at that almost like, like the diplomats in a way. Only because, like, you know, you always knew Cameron as being, like, the front man. And mm -hmm. I would have never thought Jim Jones would have, you know, to be the artist that he is today. Like, Bro, Jim is phenomenal. and But see, the thing is, Jim has a drive like no other. Yeah. Like, he came in as Cam Hype Man. Then he was writing treatments, directing videos, and, like, he's wore every hat in charge of merch, and, like, he's he's took it upon himself to figure out 
everything. So it was only natural that at some point he'd figure out how to really make good quality music. His last couple albums are arguably the best Dipset albums ever. I, I agree. I, I, I totally agree. Like, I, I still play it with El Capo. Like, yo, to what? me, to me, that Capo was, was heavy. To me, and, and I tell this to people, and everybody think I'm full of shit. But I said El Capo was album of the year last year. It was it like, was up there for me. It was up there for me. I think I had Freddie Gibbs up there and somebody else too. I, I fucking but, love about Freddie album. Freddie album. Yeah, Freddie been too. snapping for the last couple few years, man. Yeah. But no, Al Capo was one of them joints. Like, I don't know how often you might do this, but like when you riding in the New York, right. Once you go under it, once you go through the tunnel and all that shit, you throw that on and you just feel it make you feel New <laughs> York. Like like you get it. It's like when you go to Miami and you see what them, why why they make them songs down there. Like it just feels right for when you in that vibe. Right. Real shit. But I think he he he's making great music, man. Great music. And he's a hell of a weatherman. So shout out to him. Definitely. I, 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 love, I love seeing the, the weatherman Jim reports on IG. Because it's all Jim. It's mm -hmm. Jim being Jim. Yeah. You know what I mean? He got a great personality. Yeah, absolutely. And, and also, too, you know, with, with the pandemic going on and how he how he started that that quarantine studios, I said, yo, that was genius, man. He started like, building building gym equipment out of regular shit and everything. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's a beast. That definitely. Shouts out to Jim Jones if you ever see this, man. Like, he actually, <laughs> actually inspired shout me. Shout out work. to Mama Jones. Oh, I yeah. met Mama Jones on a couple occasions, but I was actually on her podcast. We performed. I got to um, ask questions and all that. So, um, cheers to Harlem. Cheers to Mama Jones, man. Salute to you, Queen, because she is dope, bro. Like, yeah. one of the illest women you'll ever like. She's so cool, bro. It's yeah. crazy. It's crazy. Definitely. Shout out to Mama Jones. Uh, you know, sw switching gears. So I, I know you went to college. He's going to Morgan State, right? <laughs> you good at this, hot? <laughs> yeah, I went to I'm Morgan. Right. Shout, out like, to, no. shout out to my MSU fam squad. Yeah, yeah, I did Morgan um, from 01 to 04. I didn't graduate yet. <laughs> okay, I got you, got you. So now, let you know, correct me if I'm, I'm wrong with this. Now, was the influence of venturing into radio did that begin in morgan state or did you you know transition into glockaware radio prior to going to morgan state hell no i ain't been at glockaware that long um what happened was i always wanted to do radio um my sister was good friends with um q dz when they were in school and when I got older, I wound up getting cool with him through basketball. We was always okay. hooping in the same spots. And I used to see what he did, and I used to be like, man, that shit is ill. But I also saw what he did, like how much work he had to put into it. Like he never slept, and right. he took a lot of hits, and he didn't get paid a lot in the beginning. And it was a lot for him, and um, he was still in school. He went to college. You know, like I watched him do all of this, and I was like, I don't know if I want to start out as an intern. Right. So I never really got into it because, like, you know, I had a lot of other things on my plate, too, like we spoke to earlier. But when I got to college, my man had a radio show because he was a communications major. <clears throat> and he had a co-host who happened to had got an internship that she really wanted and she couldn't do the show no more. Mm -hmm. So one day he like, yo, come on the show with me. You know, what I mean, kick it. We just going to talk shit, you know, have fun. Right. And the DJ was DJ Radio, who later became um, one of K Slay's DJs. So he used to have, like, we used to be jamming in there. He had music nobody had. Like, that's how he got with Slay. He used to have shit Slay ain't had. Wow. So um, we would have a ball. It was, like, kind of like the come-up show, like, feel to it. Like, we was joking and we was playing exclusives and we would get dope artists to come through and talk to us, and I would talk shit to everybody. And I realized that I kind of was okay at it. Nice. But after that, I didn't do it no more until the Glockowitz situation. Oh, okay. Nice, nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that, that's cool. Uh, you know, of course, you know, I, I do, do my, my, my tentative research, you know, as much as I No, can. I see you. Hey, I yeah. see you. But I was technically, I was sipping with Sammy then. That, oh, my man just didn't name me that. I don't make up my own nicknames, by the way. Okay. So, like, I was dying sipping with Sammy. But um, even back then on air, I was sneaking um, bottles into the um, radio station in my book bag because it's technically a classroom. <laughs> so it's a window where there's a class right there that's going on while we on the radio. And I'm sipping. 40 little half a pint of, you know what i mean right so i, I technically been simple with sammy on air <laughs> and, and, and that was actually going to be my, my next question you know leading into so how you know how did the uh sipping with sammy name come about um <laughs> uh i got a homie that 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 is funny as hell shout out the lights 
And I used to be in bars all the time, um, more so than I am now. I really don't have the time now. But right. I used to, um, Monday night, I knew where it was popping, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So it got to the point where he was like, every time I talked to you, either in the bar or was just in the bar or something, he said, who the fuck you think you is, Sam Malone? <laughs> and I was like, yo, that actually fits. And then, like, the Sipper with Sammy thing came from that. Wow. You no. Know? Gotcha. But yeah, when he called me Sam Malone, it was just like that makes sense. He yeah. actually um the same one that named me Barstool Root because they always called me Rug and just tied in my own um, attributes. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? That was actually one of the first songs that 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 I actually heard heard from you. Like I, I I'll be honest, I haven't heard everything, but mm -hmm. when I begin to notice that your name started to ring bells and and it started ringing bells in the city. I believe it was your your freestyle. I was like Barstool, Sam Malone. Sam Malone. Malone. <laughs> like, Barstool. Yo, so yeah, that's Malone. ask about me. Yeah, like <laughs> yo, I, I was yo, I was knocking at John in the wheel, like for real. Like I appreciate that. I appreciate that. My rotation, like yo, like Barstool. Sam it was Malone. just a fun joint, like literally, like one of them things where it's like, could I really just make a song out my name, like right? And when motherfuckers care, like. But then it's like at the same time it has to have a certain energy to it where it's just not about your name. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah. you, you, can, but, you I, but you can feel it though. Like like when you listen to it, like you can, you know how like people say like you can transport energy, like that's mm -hmm. a, that's one of those songs where like you can like you can actually you can feel that like because it was I like, appreciate like it. a fun song like you know not saying that everybody can do it but you just know that if you did it you're gonna enjoy it you know what I mean mm -hmm. like. Mm -hmm. Like you, yeah, that one, and 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 also too, your um, your, your track, I'm sipping, I'm sipping, I'm sipping, I'm sipping, I'm sipping. <laughs> Another fun one, right? Uh, fun as hell. I appreciate that, Hawk. But no, like, I we don't all seen done everything. I know what block you from. You know what I mean? We don't yeah. seen a lot, and we got the right to speak about anything. And sometimes I do get dark on stuff. But like you say, um, it's an energy thing with music. It's an energy thing with art in general. We going, we we not going to keep keeping music out of art, especially you know knowing what we know right. but um i think that i rather have fun create fun than be dark and most of the times i'm in that mood anyway i'm in i'm in one of my favorite places like being in the studio is like when you used to have an open gym like right. i get to yell scream cut somebody out when i go home i feel way better like i'm, yeah. I'm ready to go to bed yeah. i'm good like <laughs> it's like a workout like so when i'm in that mode i'm drinking i'm smoking i got my folks around me they're funny Right. They doing dope shit. So it makes it easy. And shout out to Bruno Brown on that sipping joint. Because um that was just an energy thing. We was on our way to the studio. He was like, yo, I found us a beat. <laughs> and he played the beat. And he was like, yo, so this is what we're going to do. And we wrote it in, in the front of the studio because we was a little early. Because I'm always early. And we got in there and we knocked it out. And it just, it, it came together, together way better than we ever expected it to. And that's the first time that I ever made a song. And before I put it out, everybody was singing it to me. Nice. Like I went out the next day cause we had the Instagram clip and I went out the next day and I went to an event and everybody was walking up to me talking about I'm sipping, I'm sipping. I'm, I'm like, yo, Damn, this man. is scary. Yeah, <laughs> like, you, like you just, you know when you got something and, and like, look, your, your folks ain't gonna lie to you. <laughs> like the, your folks and the babies, when the kids be singing along, like I get mm -hmm. videos of people with they, they three year old, they two year olds that won't stop singing. And they don't really know what they singing, but they know the cadence and it right. feels good to them. They just going off a of feeling. Yeah. It's that, that energy, man. Like that, that, that energy, it, 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 it it's a thing, man. Like you, you just, very know important. It. yeah, absolutely. Very important. And, and, and I wish I would have knew when I was younger. <laughs> <laughs> we, you, you know what though like we, we kind of had it we just ain't really understand it you know what i mean like, like yeah, i mean time. i i always had the energy but sometimes yeah. i gave it to the wrong people or the wrong situations mm -hmm. where i could have been doing we could have been doing this a long time ago together Hot, you know what i mean like we could have figured out a lot of things but we also lived too to be yes. at the point where now we could do this and it's, it's, it's it makes sense sense yeah and and and, and and you know what? Like I, I believe in you know in timing. Like time, you know time, you know timing is it's always key. Like you know what? Like the you know the man above, he, he might, you know he might got you, you know got your brain in in the process to, to have something brewing. But when it's ready to execute, you be like no no not yet. Oh no, not bro! It yet. took me um <laughs> took there. me five years to start sipping with Sammy podcast. That was an idea. 
Um, and I don't want to get ahead of you and your questions. You might. <laughs> no, no, no. Go ahead. Talk. No, no. We good. Yeah, we good. But the Sip with Sammy podcast was an idea that I had. Um, I, I guess at this point we talking about almost seven years ago mm. when I had opportunity to um be a part of another radio station locally, and they said that I could do it remotely. Right. Like I would never have to go in. They had the capability for me to just do what I need. And I was like, well, shit, I'm going to everybody bar and drinking with them or they they man cave, they block playground. I'm pulling up with the cooler. What's up? Yeah. Like and I had a um, I had Mad Labs. Shout out to him. He was going to film everything. So I was going ahead of visuals when everybody wasn't even doing visuals yet for the pods. Right. And I had um, his brother's a comedian. Now, his brother was going to be my co-host slash bartender depending on the environment and what happened with him was he went from a teacher to a principal mm. blessing yeah you know what i mean all i can say is do your thing bro right you know so like you know that kind of sidetracked it and then life happened and then i wound up bumping into um some more people and growing a little more and i talked to um k from font productions one day and she was just like if that's what you want to do, you know we could figure that out, right? Right. And I'm like, when? Like now. <laughs> and I hit up um my co-host Sai from On the Scene Magazine. Salute to her. Um, not from owner, proprietor, editor of right, On right. the Scene Magazine. <laughs> and um, after shooting a couple episodes, I told her to come through. And I said, We just gonna shoot, chop it up. She didn't know I was setting her up. After she watched the episode. She caught the bug, mm. and it's just been it's been groovy ever since. So like, it takes time. Like you said, like I said, life happens. Like you said, yeah. God happens. Like, it, it's right now. The way it is now is how it was supposed to be. Yeah. So I'm good with it. Even though we got curtailed with the pandemic, but I got over a year off before that hit. Yeah, of yeah. running around and bouncing from place to place. You know. Yeah, you know it it, it brought the notoriety to your brand, and, and that's something that you know I, I you know I like to touch on too. What's your relationship with podcasts? Like, were you do you watch a lot of podcasts? How long have you been watching podcasts and stuff like that? Like, like for me, <laughs> it it started more so where it, it started from the, the the learning curve of it, like from starting with YouTube and you know those those influencers mm -hmm. from YouTube and you know talking mm -hmm. about how they were able to set up their own podcast, like you know, big you know. Like the uh, Joe Button podcast was was always a, a big influence. Uh, mm -hmm. Drink Champs, you know, was always a, a big influence. Drink Champs and, pissed me off and made me excited the first time I saw it. Yeah, because oh, it was man. like it's similar to my idea. Yeah. <laughs> people might think I'm piggybacking, and then at the same time, it showed me that it works. Right. A so absolutely. I wasn't that mad. Yeah, mm -hmm. but like, like for me, it 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 really goes even further back. Like I was like I was a big Howard Stern fan, so you know like I I used to listen to him when he used to be on YSP, and mm -hmm. I used to watch the shows on E. So mm -hmm. you know I used to watch the E joints. Yeah, like I, I I loved that show. So between watching watching his show and the the likes of like a a Brian Gumble, like my my mindset was always how could I figure out to you know to to mash that all into one and mm -hmm. once once i saw like how the drink champs came out and stuff that kind of like i feel you like that was a bit of a buzz kill i'm like damn you know what i mean like because I, I wanted that platform to where you know everybody could be on chill and mm -hmm. you know i'm able to speak without having to you know to put a front on or anything like that and right. you know just just being me like like look like mm -hmm. i'm hot i'm cool you know like i you know i like to stay you know low-key out the way but you know if, right. I, if i'm interested in talking to you like i'm gonna talk to you i might have a beverage in my hand you know talking with you but it's gonna be delivered right <laughs> you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know so, nah, i feel you yeah. i feel you so you know like that that was that was like part of my my, my introduction in, into the in, into the podcast world but you know it it was it was also like you know, a couple of other people too that I, I can't really think of the names too, and and just based off of audio books too. Like once mm. once once I got hit the audio books, I just knew that was going to be like that that the thing that's going to change the the world because yeah, know, that form of the audio space was undervalued drastically. I think yes, because the first the first book 
I audio book I purchased was called Quitter, <laughs> talking about you know being able to leave your nine to five job and mm-hmm. and the per, and the person who wrote that book I I, I would man it's it's been a little minute since I since I I, I read it but you know I I don't want to paraphrase a whole lot you know I don't want to take too much uh, you know too much time of it either I, I want this to be you know I mean your 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 space <laughs> but bro we good but yeah but like you know the the guy he. He was like he was big into like stocks and bonds, and he basically was good with the guy was on um, the guy Ramsey. I think he he be on MSNBC and stuff or CNBC. So mm-hmm. basically, what he did was he 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 bought his own his own like mail, you know mail in newsletter, which eventually started to turn into a, a podcast itself. So mm. you know because of his you know his his you know fandom from from the show and. You know, you know, having that that successful newsletter, eventually that that would that brought him the opportunity to, you know, remove himself from his nine to five job. So I'm like, you know, email databases. Yeah. Always collect emails any way possible. Yeah. Because when you transition, you still own that database. Yes. Yes. It, and it, you can take your crowd with you to whatever you want to do, man. Yeah. And, and that's what you know I, I love to to learn from you like as far as like 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 what, what how did you tap into the to the branding side of, of sam malone because like you know look looking at your screen now like you you know you got <laughs> you got the sipping with sammy shot glasses you got the sipping with sammy bandana or what you call it the, the sandana, sandana, <laughs> the man. sandana. You, know, you got you know what i mean you got the sipping with sammy you know glass you know what i mean yeah. for your shot you know your drink like like how, how, but it, it's funny because i actually saw the stickers first before anything <laughs> you mm-hmm. know, like and that's like, the thing i've been i've had a lot of merch for a while i just had a gap between um getting new merch i still had a lot of overflow from the last batch but um since my brand is really my lifestyle i'm not trying to portray anything and i am sipping with sammy it's kind of easy to figure out um how i want to brand it and how i want to market it as far as the sipping with sammy collection like when i got the shot glasses was after I had got this, I had the big styrofoam cups, the white ones with my face on them and stuff. I was like the first one I know in the city with them. I had mine before Rick Ross and them. Right, right. But, um, That's a fact. And then I, <laughs> yeah, then I had the I Heart Bar Stool Tees and the Every Woman Needs a Bar Stool. And the shot glasses came around that time. And what happened was I had all like a few different pieces of merch, but people that didn't know me, when they would look at my table, they would be like, uh, well, how much are the shot glasses? Mm. And you tell them, and they buy five of them. Wow. And I'd be like, damn, I should have doubled that price. And like, I don't know, maybe they was too cheap. You know what I mean? But so that stuff like that influenced how I went about it this way. I mean, this time when I ordered merch, I was like, you know what? We got to get the podcast tees. Got to get the amateur twerking sucks tees Mm. because I got to be an asshole at some point. (laughs) Um, But I wanted to get more glasses and I'm like, let's step it up. Let's get some cognac glasses. Let's get real glasses. And um, being as though it was the pandemic and I got hair and I've been wearing bandanas to protest and video shoots and all type of stuff. I said, I'm going to just order some bandanas too. Right. Cause that's part of my lifestyle. Right. And they came out well. And then with the Flyboy Friday merch, shout out to Poe, you know, Rich, <clears throat> he, um, this, that's what he do. The fashion is his thing. Like he, he um went to school for it. He went to the Art Institute of Philly, one of the best fashion schools in the in the world. Oh wow! But nice. that's his lifestyle. So when um it came to getting merch for Flyboy Friday Radio, I just let him do it because he's a huge part of that already, and that's his lane. So he hit me up, getting football jerseys, getting hockey jerseys. We gonna get. Like he just starts saying stuff, and I'm like, "All right." And then yeah. next thing I know, he's he's, he's showing me the, that the bird has landed. We just got to get everything pressed up, and it, it's real. Yeah. So and, you and, know, and, and, and you know, fashion fashion is big now. I I saw the uh the young kid from Philly. He what he has the the, the Spurgo brand. Spurgo. Yep. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yep. He, he lit. He, he retired, everywhere. He retired his mom at 13. He, like he retired his mom. Yeah, that was a few years ago. Oh really? A couple years ago. Yeah, yeah. Like, I said, man, like I, I years ago. I'm, I'm, I'm just you know catching on to his story. I was like, wow, like the flip is ridiculous though. Like, 
if you could get it to catch if your design is right and if you if you do your due diligence to get your materials at a reasonable price man it's literally like a pill flip <laughs> like yeah. you you buy for five sell for 40. you know right. what i mean if you want right. to it's like it's crazy depending on what you got what quality you could find and, and how you can maneuver once you get the upfront out the way and you could own um, you know recruit half of what you put out it should be all uphill after that oh yeah because you just keep reinvesting into the you know into the product and keep expanding the product and you should be good just always give quality if somebody buy a t-shirt and they wash it once and they can't wear it no more they're not excited about buying another one right <laughs> you know what i mean yeah and, and speaking of which i i, I got a big up and i know you from you you good with you know with the unify brand too like big big up to absolutely them, man. shout like, out to the yeah, brothers man they got like, sneakers and watches and shit man yes like salute to them man yeah, ryan and them ryan, I, I, ryan and aziz and them like yo they man. always show me love salute to them brothers man definitely yeah. Shoot, and, and my my guy PH, you know he he got the socially detached brand right now, like you word. Know, shout out to him. You know what I mean? Big up to him as well. But yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah, I love it's, it. It's 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 amazing. You know, like you know, seeing the the, the many different brands now, and I think it's easier to to make it now than it was beforehand, especially you know with the power of technology. Like it's it's yeah. it's, it's, it's a big deal. Like and you know, my, access buddy, is huge. Yeah, buddy of mine said this, you know, um, the other day he was like, "Yo, he said, how? he said you gotta get some politic and shirts, man." Like, I said, "You got to." Yeah, I said, "I, I definitely do." I just gotta figure out, you know, what I mean, how I'm gonna do the logo. Like, I mean, I, I got the logo now, but it's like, I, I gotta get different logos. You know what I mean? You know, to make make it appealing, you know, to you know to everybody. But yeah, figure it out though. Yeah, I, I'm definitely gonna cop when you grab one. Definitely but, appreciate it. But no, that's that's what you gotta do. I mean. One thing about t-shirt culture, just 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 talking about t-shirts, is it never dies. Mm -mm. For one, like it's not one of them things that's a trend. Like you go wear a t-shirt from forty years ago, four years ago, it's still the same thing. But then everybody subconsciously reads your t-shirt. Right. Everybody that walks past you, since you was a baby and learned how to read, you've basically been reading everything that you wrote past. You used to piss your kids, your, your parents off. Right, <laughs> McDonald's, two for uh, one. They be like, what the hell? Happy meal. You reading license plates. <laughs> so like adults do it when with clothing. It, right. It's like a, it's a subconscious thing. But if there's a message in it or something like that, or there's a brand in it, like like you say, logo recognition or, or a logo that's cool, it'll catch them and it'll stick with them. Yeah. And then when they see it again, now they they intrigue for real, you know. Mm -hmm. And people are nosy. They got these phones in their hand. All they want to do is look up stuff. Oh yeah, you know. That's it, why my shirts say the podcast on them because yeah. just in case you wonder what Sipper was saying, me it's the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> so, so now when you walk five feet from me, you could go in your phone and look it up. Yeah, I already know what you're doing. <laughs> you know. What? I, I need to adhere to that. Like, look, cause I, I that's all. Honestly, like outside of you know for for special things, like you know what I mean. I got I got a button up on today, but other than that, like if everybody that know me is either a white tee or a black tee, mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and, and that's it. Like, look. But you could put your logo right on the same kind of t-shirts you've been wearing, and you'd yep. be fine. <laughs> exactly. And you always be repping, always be branded. Mm -hmm. But like one thing about it is um some of the we was talking about earlier when you said um the people closest to you they don't do the the most sometimes when you give people multiple ways to support you yeah then you'll see it so like getting um merch is part of that it's like all right I might not be in the pods or maybe my one view might not be doing nothing for him, but I could put a couple of eyes in his pocket. Even if I can't get to him, I could cash app him and he can mail me the joint. You know what I mean? Right. And that'll support you either way. And actually that'll be more support than a like or subscribe because it's monetary. True. And, and it'll help you build your, build your, your own platform. Yeah. And if they're wearing it, somebody out, out in the street say, Hey, who that, who that, <laughs> you know, like, you'd be surprised how many people realize that they, they should have known each other. <laughs> He's like, Oh, you know him. Cause it, you know, they got your shirt on. It'd be like, yeah. how can people's yeah. Yeah. Oh, I went to school with Hawk. That's my man. That, you know what I mean? Like that happens. I seen it. Cause I've known people that had um, clothing brands for a while and I run up on people like that in the bar. Yeah. Like my man, butts got X 67. And at one point, it was it was a smaller brand, so it was like you knew him if you had it on. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's like you I literally used to walk up to people like, yo, you know butts? Yo, 
they be like, but you know Tristan? Yeah, that's my man. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> and it just be like that. So I mean, you'd be amazed at how how dots could connect without you even having to do nothing once Definitely. your brand is out there floating. De- definitely and you know like that 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 goes for everybody you know somebody out here that's that you know that, that has a dream like whether if it's you know going into podcasting or you know entertainment or or trying to get into the fashion brand itself like these mm-hmm. are some these some gems right here sam malone talking about like listen listen to it man like and fashion is competitive but yeah. people want to be fine people want to be different right. so if you figure out a balance then you should be able to get it off and just don't overshoot. Make sure that you can you can get rid of whatever you get. It's just like hustling. Yeah, definitely. Oh. And, and, and 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 what some I think what some people don't understand too, like it's simple. Like you know, don't over overload your brain. You know, with something that's simple. You know, just take your time. You know, pra- practice patience. I think that's that's been the key of twenty twenty as far as having patience you know as far no as that's been my whole thing this year yeah like patience. ever since this hit i'm like yo i'm gonna just work on my patience because i know some i was supposed to have been working on but now everybody's stressed out i ain't trying to push nobody over the edge so i'm gonna be more patient so that i ain't gotta worry about it right so speaking of which you know kind of you know switching gears like what you know outside of you know rapping or even you know doing the podcast like what 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 keeps you grounded like what what do you do on your your off time as as far as like when you're not indulging into into the rap or the radio or the podcasting the weird thing is um for the last few years since i've been doing media so much because um like you said there was glock aware there was 98.5 fm and then there was my podcast starting kind of at the same time i was i was transitioning through all three of them i started watching podcasts all day i watch mm-hmm interviews long form interviews all day i like to watch the greats talk to people i like to watch the silly people talk to people i like to figure out from an artist standpoint and from a um an interviewer standpoint how how to navigate certain things and how um you know how it's done better than i possibly might may have been doing it but i it's not like basketball. I can't really steal it. Cause like I say, it's all personality, yeah. but it's little things that you notice when you do this all the time, you'll see that the interviewer did like, you'll be like, Oh, all right. I see how he got. Yeah. All right. That was cool. It was getting a little crazy. And then <laughs> that's how he pulled out of that. That's right. cool. You know what I mean? Because these things happen and you don't ever want to embarrass your guests or yourself. Right. You know? So I watched the greats. Like you said, how, like I used to watch Howard all the time and now it's just youtube gives us so many different options of like what we can watch i watch 85 south because it's hilarious i watch joe and them because it's pretty it's pretty complete but i also watch rogan a lot i i I watch like a lot of randoms too you know um all the smoke is is heavy for me matt barnes and steven jackson i love that john oh yeah i think matt barnes is great at this like great Mm-hmm. I, I don't even think he knows how good he is at doing interviews. Like it's ridiculous. And you, but um, yeah. R- real quick, I do, do you, that. Do you hmm? think? Do you think they bounce off of you know by you know having to speak with the media so much? It kind of like they they organically you know take take that in and build it for themselves. Possibly, I think um for some people you already naturally have it, and for a lot of athletes they learn it after they get into the league. Right. But, like, if you watch, like, LeBron interviews when he was 13, 12 years old, he knew how to talk to the press. Oh, yeah. So he didn't have to – and, I mean, he had a lot of hype and a lot of attention, but still, a lot of other kids have had that kind of attention at that age. Maybe not to his level, but, like, from, like, press being at their games and stuff. Right. And they didn't know how to talk to the media, how to be gracious and humble to their teammates and stuff like that. He already knew that. And then I went to high school with Eddie Griffin. Right. And I remember um, we won a bunch of championships one year, football, basketball, track probably baseball i don't know we won like five in one year oh, wow. and i remember being at the football championship game and we was ready to leave because we had just won it's like it's time to get out of here and ed was like hold up and he was watching the quarterback do his interview because ed was like man i gotta figure this shit out mm. but that quarterback was the same age as ed and he had already he was doing it you know yeah. what i mean so yeah. 
But like I say, for the majority of athletes, they learn after they get into the league. So I think that Matt Barnes probably was more natural with it, just judging by watching them now. And I think Steven Jackson figured it out. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> like, I don't think Steve ever gave a fuck before. No. <laughs> uh-uh. He was going in. And that's right. my guy, man. Salute to them, though. Because but- um, he's been wearing – hold up. Let me shout out. He's been wearing um my man's – shout out to Riz, the ruler. He's been wearing that tribe gear. Uh, religiously lately i've seen him wear about three four pieces so i want to thank you for supporting my people stack real shit that's that's just in case he watches your show because we don't know who absolutely and and, and you know what too shout out to to the q connect as well because i know she she, you know i mean that that's main you know i mean used to live down the block because she she works with steven jackson all the time she out there on the front line you know during you know during these times you know dope with with the movement you know definitely shout out to the q connect as well absolutely man yeah man transitioning so you know we 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 already nailed down you being being the, the the rapper we nailed down you know we we you know we we spoke a little fluently about the, the sipping with sammy P- podcast so like how, how again how how did you get back in well how did you get into you know the the, the glock aware radio days you know I, I see that a lot you know maybe you social best media. Be beer, please what well, um the irony of it is like you said we was talking right before we um push record right it's real similar to your story um i had a job okay. <laughs> and a, um a friend of mine shout out the wave cartel wave had um he had got a radio show at glockaway and he was one of those guys that every time i had something going on or my people's had something going if he was in the area and he was not even from philly Right. Like he don't live in Philly. I mean, oh, wow. he would pop up. He pull up. You know what I mean? He coming across the bridge. He bringing crew with him. They spending money, Um, you know, with which is situation. And it was like love all the time. Right. So when he got a radio show, I'm like, you know, I'm pulling up on him. Go check him out. So I went and checked him out. He interviewed me and um, I said, oh, that's cool. You know, it was it was decent. I left. I came back a couple of weeks later, probably like a, uh, probably three or four weeks. And we was talking, and this time when I went, it was just him there. He didn't have a crowd in the studio. Right. So I wound up on the whole show, like, co-hosting. And I started talking shit. I'm like, man, this cool. I could, I'd be here every other Friday, because I had every other Friday off of work. Right. So he was like, man, whatever. And I'm like, all right, cool. And then I went back to work probably that next week and got hurt at work. Wow. Had to get surgery and all of that. <clears throat> So after I got through, like, soon as I could drive, I went to the station to go to the show. Okay. And I still had the um, joint on my leg. And, like, I was still fucked up. But I went to the show and I was like, um, you know, how you been? Nah, nah, nah. He like, man, no, cut it out, man. You was talking crazy, talking about you about to be here every week. I ain't seen you in a month. Of, you know, like that. And I was like, little do you know, I got time now. I ain't got to go to work. Right. <laughs> I be here every week. Right. And that's what happened. Um, and then over time, after being there for about um a year and a half, maybe two years, he started getting opportunities to do other things. He's been acting and doing some major stuff. I don't really want to put it all the way out there, but he's he's got some good opportunities that he's been pursuing. Gotcha. So he hasn't been on the show no more. So it, it kind of looks like it to somebody that's new. It looks like I started it. But no, he brought me on board, man. And it just worked. It gelled. We meshed, right. you know. Oh, that's that's love, man. Yeah, yeah. It was fun. It's 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 fun though, cause like one thing about Fly Day, it's four to six on a Friday afternoon when people are either wrapping up work, most people, or getting off work, transitioning, picking up whatever they gotta get till they get home. So we just try to have a ball. Right. You know, we 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 definitely we play all mostly exclusive, but everything is underground quote unquote music from local artists and people that support us support the station the whole show is that you don't hear jay-z on my show unless i got a, a guest dj you know right and we talk to people and we, we try to give them a proper platform to get their thing off and that's fun because i've been on the other side i've went to damn near every station in the city as a rapper right you know and it's not always fun bro it's awkward as hell a lot of the times and i'm an easy going person right yeah <laughs> and, and 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 that's cool and that's something that that i do i do like to see you know and i, I do love you know with your, your you know with the you know with your show as well as the, the glock aware radio station itself 
you know it, it appears that they they do break a lot of new artists you know whether they're local you know regional like that's that's one of the, the coolest things that you know somebody can have and you know i i wish you know to who may see this that's an artist like look tap into you know glock aware radio definitely tap into glock you know, aware t- t- tap in you know if you got music you know s- s- send it out to them you know you know if you, you want to give an email address real quick right now you can feel free you know what i mean but i mean like, if you want to um yeah any music you want to send in and make sure it's good, make sure it's mixed and mastered, um, send it to glockaware.com. That's G-L-O-C-A-W-E-A-R.com. I mean, hmm, my bad. Glockaware at gmail.com. Gotcha. G-L-O-C-A-W-E-A-R <laughs> at gmail.com. You can check it out on glockaware.com. You can check out, you can download the Glockaware app. Um, most of the shows are streamed live on YouTube almost daily it's 13 shows on the station you can check out the shows and see what personality you prefer what energy you prefer or you could tap in with everybody but um i definitely if you got a brand if you need merch you could get it there mm-hmm. you know he does the printing and the pressing so that's for you too and um i mean everything down to stitching so oh, yeah. do that definitely i think that um the benefits of being part of the glockaware family and even people that don't have shows on that station to tell you they outweigh a whole lot of other stuff that you got to go through to get respect in, in decent platforms out here. Real rap. Just just do what you got to do. Network, man. Network, network, network. That's a fact. And let, let me ask you, man, this, this is kind of off, off the top, you know, you know, just speaking about because I know Glockaware Radio is, it's, you know, independent, you know, independent radio. You know, like I, I was listening to, to the radio the other day and. I just feel like radio, mainstream radio markets only mainstream individuals nowadays. Like, I feel like it's missing that, like how when QDZ was, you know what I mean, back, you know, like with the come up shows and stuff like that. Like, it, you know. That's what, um, you about to make my point for me. Yeah, like. it, It always, it always has been only supported mainstream. The only time you heard other stuff was during that one or two hour show. Right. In every city, you know, that um really got to break records and play original hip hop and have people up to the station that's not allowed in their door the daytime hours. Like it's it's different. And it's it was a um a time slot that was actually just it was given to us because they was neglecting it. They didn't see that they see it as a void, something that wasn't prime time. So here, y'all take that part and from eight to ten, y'all could play real hip hop. Mm. But when you have one company owning every hip hop station across the country, or two at most, then these companies are in cahoots with major labels, distributors, and things like that, then you get the five songs per city format. Mm. At eight maximum. Right. And then in certain cities, there's not even the pressure to play local artists. Like even in Philly, they don't play local people unless you mainstream. Right. Even sometimes on the shows that that fake like they would on on, on FM radio. I want to be clear. Right, right. But yeah. when you go, you go an hour and a half down the road to Baltimore, and you know you in Baltimore. Mm-hmm. They're gonna play the same Drake stuff and all that that you're gonna hear up here. But you're going to hit Baltimore Club. You're going to hit some local Baltimore artists. Like, they have a little more pressure or I don't know what it is. It's just different. And that's one thing that we don't have here until you get to, like, Glock Awares, until you get to certain shows on these other stations and certain, you know, it's a lot of um, internet radio stations that's local. But Glock Aware has actually been one of the most consistent. We're always on air. Yeah. You don't take the station, no shut down. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't no months off, ain't no weeks off. Like it never happens. You know, right. I've I've only missed one week since I've been there. I've been there probably three, three and a half years now. I've only missed one week and I, I decided that I wasn't gonna um sacrifice my vacation. Hey, <laughs> you know, it was one of them things like you know what, we can go to this time, but if we go this time, it's a little cheaper. It's like, you know what? Fuck it. We right. out. And, and, and I bet too, like it's not a job for you like you love it you know what I mean? no nah, like, it's it's it, it's fun as hell yeah. it goes too fast most of the time bro it yeah. goes way too fast like because i get caught up in it but when i'm done i feel like i just worked out or i just um did a shift 
<laughs> Seriously, <laughs> no, I don't want to do nothing. I, 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 <laughs> I, I go home and smoke. <laughs> I, I, I totally dig, man. I, I, I totally dig. But um, uh, but it's fun because you know what it gives me. My bad. No, you no, know what you it gives it. me. And I say this a lot, but I think it's important because, like you said, um, and I didn't really get to tell you much into that, but um, what keeps me sane, like, since I was a kid, since I was obsessed with rap music, I've always wanted to be the first one with the music. I always wanted to be in the room while I was getting made. I always wanted to know the people that the chefs in the kitchen that cooked this up. Right. And now that's my job. Right. That's my life. Being backstage, on stage, um, VIP, um is my life now and it's like it's a blessing it came fast as hell but that's where it's fun at because i still feel like a kid getting that exclusive right you see what i'm saying mm -hmm. yeah. yeah that's the illest part probably yo that, nah, that that's cool man like <laughs> especially like just be, being able to to be involved and like get, you're in tune and not just that like you know you like you you have your peers that you know what I mean that also will keep you informed you know for these type of you know music or you know anything that's going on in the city yeah because i cheated i'm on both sides <laughs> <laughs> i'm on both sides but i mean also um speaking of peers like being able to tie my folks into my situation. You know, right. like, Poe never cared about doing radio or none of that, but he's going back my play. Right. And he's been able to figure some things out and network. And now everybody know who he is. Whatever play he makes, like, like with the merch, what he been, it's, it goes crazy because people know him and know what his brand was before he had a brand. They know this right. is how he carried it. Right. And it's like him, not a lot of the people that I see around me. Um, Shoot, my DJ is Micah. He grew up on my block. DJ Freaky Freak, um, DJ Trail is my OG. We get him once a month to DJ. Like that's fun. <laughs> and then the yeah. people that come to see them, that's that's my folks. That's like, oh shit, this just show I ain't even know. And it just be like, <laughs> it, bro, you have no idea, it, man. It, it, it be organic, like it'll be yeah, like, oh, it's, shit. like hey, it's a dope space. Like it's an uptown party in there often. Oh man. I, I mean, up, often I by accident. One, one day. <laughs> oh, you, like, man, you more than welcome. Oh man, more love. than welcome. A absolutely, I'm, I'm gonna definitely hit you up on that. Like, yo, I want to slide through? Like, man, it, it slide, does, man. Bring... It does. It does look like a party all the time, though. <laughs> like, yeah, and I mean, it's not fake. It's like you can watch it live happening. Like when you hear us on air and it's out of control. If you look on the YouTube, it's the same way. Yeah, <laughs> we are there having it, but it's all love. And what people don't realize is. These ain't people just coming in the studio to party. There's producers, there's DJs, there's rappers, there's singers, there's designers, there's everybody in there got something to sell, but they're not in there trying to sell something. Right. You know, it's a camaraderie. It's a support thing. Matter of fact, damn near all of them is in there trying to, oh, let me get a Sam Dana. Oh, don't you got them shirts out? Hey, I heard you put purses out. Like, motherfuckers are spending money with each other. Yeah, look, network. Or, 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 you know, I'm connecting artists with producers and DJs. And, like, that's what goes on when, we, when we're when not talking on a microphone. We in there doing that. Right. But we dancing and we drinking and we smoking. And come on, man. And I, you see some of the toughest guys in the world in there with the biggest smile on their face you ever seen. Yeah. Look, it, it's amazing, man. The, 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 uh, the, the one Friday and... and... Look, it had me glued because, you know, I haven't heard from him in a while. Like, when y'all had Rampage on, I'm like, Whoa. I said, oh, wow. Like That was big for me. That was yeah. big for me. You know, I was going to ask you what, you know, the, the biggest, you know, guess you might have had. But, you know, I don't want to sound groupie-ish. <laughs> like, like, no, like, I mean, but like, <sighs> big is gauged on different things because being yeah. as though I don't only do music, it's like I've had political people on my shows like how do you <laughs> yeah yeah but, um i mean shit nigga i rap for fucking 20 minutes straight back to back against hell row mm -hmm. on my show oh wow. you know what i mean rampage said um and i believed him when he said it i don't know if he was gassing me but he said that's the best interview he ever had wow. he'd been in the game how many years yeah you know what i mean like 20. Yeah, 20 plus. Those is mm -hmm. those is moments. I appreciate that shit. Um being able to be the first person to play Suzanne Christine's song on um, Fallen Tears, which is one of my favorite songs in the world right now for the last couple years. Like, and then watch it go around the world after I was the first one to play it on air. Like, that's amazing. And then I just have her back a couple weeks ago with two new slammers, and she like, the only reason you ain't the first one that played it is because hot 97 played it today. 
Come and it's on. like, yo, that's heavy. That's, it, yeah. <laughs> that's heavy. That's the party like, itself. <laughs> like, you doing what? what you supposed to do out here. Like, you know what right. I mean? Right. So, like, like when you see that kind of stuff, it just boosts you, man. It's the same way you probably feel or I feel when we look at each other doing what, we, what, what we're supposed to be doing. It's like, man, that's that's what it is. Man, listen. And and I got to get the mind. <laughs> right. it, it, exactly, man. Look, like, one, I, I, I keep it a buck. Like, I'm at the point, like, when it comes to, like, my social media and stuff, like, I... I I love seeing the positivity. Like I, I love, yeah, I love seeing people doing the work that I'm doing. Like I don't look at it as competition or anything like that. Like it's, it's, it motivates me. Like it motivates, it motivates me to, to be better. To you know, to get on my ass to do what I, I need to do. Pause. Like you know, like I. I need you know what you? I don't think you realize though. What's that? <laughs> It's the opposite of how he was when you was young. Cause now facts, big facts. When you was young, you ain't want to tell people what you was into, which made it hard for you to connect with like-minded people that weren't that you didn't meet in those spaces. Right. Now you could go online and be like, damn, Sammy Potton, son doing music. Now you excited because you know you could tie them in with what you're doing and it's love there. Right, right. You know what I mean? Like, cause that's how I be feeling. If I see somebody else potting, like you said, it's not competition. It's like, yo, we got to cross pot or something. Yeah, like let's get my pot in your pot. Like I get excited about that. Like it's 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 more opportunity to build with people that I already knew. Right, it, it, exactly. In a different way. It, 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 That's ex- dope as hell. It, it, exactly, and, and like I, I'm I'm grateful for for the social media that we have. Like even though you mm-hmm. know from time to time I be saying some people be putting bullshit on it. I'm like, oh man, get that out of here. Like, look, look, let me, let me, look. Where, where, the, where the heart to the, you know, to the stuff at, you know what I mean? That I know mm-hmm. that, that, that matches the energy that I want to give out. And like, absolutely. I, I, I enjoy that, man. You know, like, I, I, how I, have you always been able to do that? <laughs> Bro, you have smiled your entire life. I'm sitting here getting interviewed <laughs> by you and I feel like I look mean. Cause you smiling the whole time, and I know it ain't been perfect your whole life. I know you. I know your brother. I know which, like I say, which y'all grew up around, bro. Right, you right. have showed love and smiled since I've known you. Right. Every day. It. it, it and it, like, what? What does that? Is it the process? Like how you treat social media? Where you like? I don't even ingest the other side. I just keep it with what I want to see. You. You know what it is? It's like, you know, like I have up and down days. But it's like, I'm sure you do. That's right, why I'm you know asking. I mean? you. Like it, you know, what I mean, like you know, like don't get me wrong. Like I, I do have up and down days. But see, the thing mm-hmm. is, like, I don't want this to sound, you know, like crazy. But it's like, God bless me with a smile, and it's like I can't do nothing about that. Like That's hard. I, I don't, I, I don't, it. I don't have like a, a, a answer that I can really tell you to like. No, like, but you're one this, of them people, like, I always speak on people that when you see them, they make you smile because right. they so excited and they're so, like, you You don't know what you probably done for so many people in your life because you're using the fact that you have a smile. Right, yeah. And, like, people, you know, <laughs> like, people will stop me, like, literally in, like, stores and stuff, and they'll be like, <laughs> they'll be like, sir, you know, like, I know you don't know me, this and that, like, and I'm like, but, you know, you have a great smile, and it's like, I that really energy hit him from across the aisle. Yeah, it, it, exactly, man. Look, <laughs> look, man. Look, I can tell you, man. Like, look, this, this smile. Oh, that's a good this, thing, man. This, this, this smile, this smile got through a lot of things, man. <laughs> 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 a, a, a lot, a lot of things. <laughs> like, look, the fact man. that you hesitated so much to say that makes it even better. <laughs> that was the best part. Look, that that that's for the book down the road. <laughs> Yeah, man, you gotta like, save something for the memoir. Like, right, exactly. <laughs> like, man, listen, like, look, like, you know, like, like you say, like, everybody, everybody go through shit. I've been through mm-hmm. shit. I've been through a lot of shit. Thing is, you know, I just know how to control myself to where, like, you know, I don't have to, I don't have to voice myself on social media or anything like that. Like, mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Like it, it kind of goes back. But to this me. being since young, this way before social media, you've true. been like this is true. on the block with the hard heads. You done walked up after some tense situations and right. shook everybody head and smiled and kept it moving. Like right. and, and, and you, <laughs> you know, know like and, and you know what's crazy about that? It's like you know even dealing with the hard heads. Like 
the hard head fuck with me. <laughs> like, yeah, yo, why like, wouldn't? But why wouldn't you? You right. not you, man. You not bothering nobody. You not right. hurting nobody. And right. like I said, you make people feel better, even if they want to be an asshole. It's been times where I've been on my shit. And I seen that one homie that's always like, yo, <laughs> and I fought it. And next thing I know is, <laughs> and now I look stupid because I'm trying to fight the smile. I should have just smiled. But right. like, you can't, that energy is a real thing. Right. I, I, I'll i tell one story real quick. Talk and, to me. And I was down South Street and, you know, it was me, a couple other, couple of people and we were in the car. And, you know, mm-hmm. we, we was talking, you know, talking to chicks that was, you know, walking down South Street and whatnot. So, you know how this was around the time when they, they used to have a cop at every light. So trying to keep it moving. Yeah. So it was it was at the point where I actually went through, you know, I, my car was kind of hanging out from the light. So the cop was being an asshole like, hey, hey. What you doing moving? You know what I mean? Like, you know, you you blocking the intersection. And you, look, I'm I'm being, you know, generous. Not generous. I'm, excuse me, using the wrong word. But, you know what I mean? I was being genuine. Like, listen, sorry, officer. And he thought my smile was being, you know, being snarky. <laughs> he said, oh, you trying to be an asshole? Oh, I could pull you over right now. I was like, for what? I ain't do nothing. <laughs> 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 with that same look on your face. <laughs> right. Like, I was like, yo. And look, me, meanwhile, the same chicks that, me, you know, me and, uh, and my homies in the car talking to, they they laughing like, yo, ain't getting in trouble. Like, <laughs> Got it. You about to get a reservoir for smiling. Exactly. Yo, but I, I think I've been the first person in Philly to get that. I should have let I it mean, happen. It's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's crazy? The way they act, man, it's probably a bunch of dudes probably have been beat over smiling. Like, exactly. <laughs> Y'all need to relax. Right. Like, yo, like, yo, the dude really thought I was smiling at him, you know, being being sarcastic, snarky, and whatnot. That's the inferiority, like, that's the inferiority complex, which is crazy because you the one with the gun and the badge. Right, exactly. You it's know? so scary when they show their hands sometimes because it's like, just as an adult, you shouldn't be there mentally, bro. Right. I'm like now you uphold the law. No, yeah. you can't do that. Yeah, exactly. And look, now let me bump into into this officer now. He be like, I did that? Really? <laughs> like if yeah. he didn't met you, if he did, if someone would have introduced you to him at lunch or something, or the, you know, a wedding or something, mm-hmm. and you'd have been smiling and y'all have been chopping it up, and you'd have been like, you know, you look familiar. Yeah. Ain't you an officer? You be down South Street. You almost arrested me one night for smiling. <laughs> he would he would feel horrible. Mm-hmm. He would feel horrible, bro, because yeah. he met you. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing, like, stop treating everybody like they murderers, man. Like, and not yeah. saying that they all do it, but I don't make excuses for them no more. Right. But like, some people are just happy. Some people are just sad. This stuff might not have nothing to do with you. We right. have a life too, bro. Exactly. Like, look, like, like you know, like my man on half fake. He be like, "Yo, I'm Cuban, B." Like, look, I'm, I'm human. Cuban, B. I- I'm human, B. <laughs> like, yo, like, yo, I'm human. Like. I, I, just got, like, I just got a natural smile. Like that's just what it is. <laughs> you know yo, what I mean? that that might be a good T-shirt. Yo, I'm human, B. Hey, yeah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> you might not one. Yo, yo, that might be your image. Just working sucks. Yo, right, yo, write, write that down. <laughs> yo, I'm human, B. <laughs> no, but I mean, it's funny. But like I said before, same shit make you laugh, make you cry, man. Like, right. We we've learned. And you've probably handled it better than me now that we're talking about how, how your disposition and personality has always been. But we've learned to laugh through the nonsense, man. Oh, yeah. We, we've, we've, we've learned to find a reason to smile. Mm. And I always tell people, Richard Pryor probably said it best, man. Whenever it's going back, get some sunshine on your face, man. Yes. Everybody need a little sunshine. Go look at nature. You know, mm-hmm. don't stay in the basement with all your pressure on you go breathe and like um getting back to something you said about maintaining sanity when they said we was about to be locked in the house in march i ordered an electric bike and some coloring books oh wait yo i did too <laughs> I, I started thinking about shit that make me happy i used right. to love ride my bike and the last job i had i used to color all day with them kids that shit used to be relaxing yeah I'm like you know what get some color pencils couple coloring books and, and, and my e-bike so if i feel like going outside i could just float around a little bit get some air you know because i ain't 
doing but so much walking and (laughs) but like little things man i I, i've been through depression before yeah and when i was in it i was in such a cloud that i i didn't know what i was in but i'm fighting and constantly dissecting my mood to make sure i don't go back there again right and, and so you, I'm starting to identify my coping mechanisms. <laughs> no, you, no, I, 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 I totally understand because I think we, we all deal with it. Like you know, like I, I have my moments too, and mm-hmm. that's something that like I, I, I take in meditation. Like I'm a big, I'm a big person, you know, on meditation. Like I, I love it. Like I, I have to do it at least, you know, if it ain't once, twice a day. Like and what's your what's your process? Is it is it anywhere you add? Is there a sound? Is there a, a aroma that you use? What is what's your process? Like not detail. You ain't gotta give it all up. Right. But like how does it work for you? For me, it, it's early in the morning. It, it's mm. it's it's early in the morning. Like when I wake up, Good early reflection. Right. It, exactly. So it's right before you know I I actually start anything for my day. So it's like mm. boom. Like I wake up in the morning. I got I got my go to when it comes to like a certain page on IG that that I follow like it's like the, affirmations uh, and stuff. Yes, yeah, mm-hmm. like I, I, mm-hmm. it's on point. It's like it's already there between five thirty six in the morning. Oh. I, so when I wake up, I already know that notification is there. That's the only honestly. That's actually the only notification I get. Other than that, I turn all my notifications off. Mm, that's I, smart. I've actually turned my notifications are for for the majority of my my social media platforms the only notifications smart. only notifications that i receive is through twitter and that's only for my sports stuff cuz i'm a sports buff so, yeah it keeps you on a on a random updates all day yeah right exactly so first thing in the morning i'm up i read my affirmation mm-hmm. and then from there I'm just, you know what I mean? I, I, I prep myself to, you know, to meditate. And what I do is I take in the, the natural air. And and, 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 and it, can, it, it can depend on where I'm at. You know what I mean? Like, if I'm in, right. a, bed, if I'm in a bedroom, I take in the, 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 the natural, you know, the noise from outside. If, mm. I'm, if I'm, you know what I mean? Depending on how I start my day, like if I, you know, work out in the morning, like if I, you know, get mm-hmm. on the bike, you know, if mm-hmm. I finish – you know, I might, you know, just lay and sometimes I'm, I may take in just the, the sound of the refrigerator and then just, you know, go into meditation from there. And, you know, like I, I, I try to block myself from not, you know, from my, my, my myself listening to a lot of things, because it's like mm-hmm. once you once you get to the point where you you're not, you know, when you're in the process of meditation, but then this is where you begin to learn that you know your brain has other ideas that you can control but you're not controlling so it's mm-hmm. like so it's like once you get into that that stance, all of this going on and you trying to exactly yeah so it's like once you get into that sta- <laughs> once you get into that standstill and then your brain just start warping you be like oh i need to go here later what about such and such doing something like this then you just might even think about somebody random that you ain't even seen in a year or whatever. Like, you know, like right, it, it right. can it can get that way. But mm-hmm. it's about being able to ground yourself and being able to understand the power that you have amongst yourself to be able mm-hmm. to, con- to control it. Like we can do it. It's just that do people do it often? Maybe not. But I've I got non traditional ways that I've done it over my life. Um, yeah. At one point when I did, I was doing the most running and probably throwing the most stones at the penitentiary I possibly could. Every morning I would get up six, something in the morning, go to the park, sit out there, smoke and watch traffic hmm. for like an hour. Okay. Before anybody would come out, anybody would hit my phone, or anything. I would just be out there. People didn't know because if they did, they would be out there with me. Right. So I didn't tell nobody, you know what I mean? But I used yeah. to sit there and I sit by the, like in between the baseball field and the football field. And I look on the upsell and I would just watch the cars and I'm not watching them after five minutes. I'm in my head. Yeah. But it's just that, that flow is, it would, it would get me there, you know? Yeah. And then, um, <clears throat> we got a fire pit. So 
a lot of times I zone out watching fire. Okay. But the reason that I know these things work is because I know the things that I've been able to figure out when I've done them. But I think the most beneficial one was when I was doing it first thing in the morning. Mm, yes. It's something about that early AM energy, man. Like, mm-hmm. it, and, and, and I say this, like anything before, like a lot of people, and I would, I would probably recommend this too. And I honestly, I can't say I should recommend this because I haven't been doing it about this time. But like when I was on a on a the traditional nine to five schedule, mm-hmm. I was I was always doing my meditation between four thirty to five thirty in the morning. But mm-hmm. but now you know I'm in a position where I can create my own schedule. I've been doing it maybe between six thirty to seven thirty in the morning. Still not bad. Right. Personally, I think if you can do any type of meditation, any type of self-reflection for, you know, for yourself before nine o'clock, it's great. Like to me, and and this is something that I don't know how come nobody ever talked about this, you know, for us, you know, especially, you know, for our culture. Like, I feel like it's, 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 it's a benefit for us, you know, like if people actually, you know, took into it, like. I think, I think the energy in the world would be a, a little bit different. Yeah, you know, like I, I agree. But you know, what's weird. Like even with you saying that, it's like when you think about traditional news platforms. Yeah. And if you've ever watched news around the clock, you know this is true. They actually take care of their mental health through that some yes. ways because what they show you at the nine o'clock news is not what they show at 11 and at midnight is not what they show at five and at six everything's bright again right they don't even talk about none of that stuff they talked about and it's just like they really control their first thing they ingest in the morning (laughs) right right and and, and you know what that and that's their process and that ain't that ain't just local like and, and no, is, that's regular. You, I've yeah. been in hotels, same right, thing. right? Yeah, like, <laughs> and, and and this might sound crazy. Like I actually watch more out of state city news than I watch my own local news, mm. and I and I do that not only just to not just for the stories, but I always I always like to look at this as far as like the the type of direction that they had, and also the diversity that they have too. So it's like if I if I might want to feel froggy and be like, you know what, I might just want to put a tape together for for um, Fox five and DC, whatever. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like, you know, I, I, I'll i do it. But you know what's crazy, though? The other cities got all the bad weather girls. We be thinking we got something, man. Oh, yes. Yes, indeed. Them Atlanta <laughs> newscasters be looking like they just retired from Magic City. Like, mm, damn. Goodness gracious. I be like, oh, they let man. You just stand in front of that green screen like that. Yeah. <laughs> now. There is one thing I I do I do want to I do want to uh, speak on and we could probably wrap it up from here. I know we, we've been on for for a good whatever while. you want to do, bro. I'm good. Got you, got you. Yeah. So I you know I I listen to Sway in the morning a lot and great show. And there, and there was a uh, I believe this it might have been after the uh, discussion that Sway it was a conversation that him and uh, and Buster Rhymes had and mm. and they talked about how. Actually, no. It, it's not. It wasn't really tailored to Buster Rhymes, but it was just more so tailored to the the, the um the hip hop culture itself. And you know how like you can look at the the rock and roll era, and you know like the Rolling Stones. Like you know, no matter how old they are, they continue to you know be consistent with concerts and you know just being able to, like just to be relevant to say. But then you Bino, know, Elton John. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like any any you know, anybody from, from that level, like no matter how old they are, they're still at a at a relevant, you know, level. They held like, higher up. Right. Like, it, it being it, while we're in twenty twenty. But if you look at the, the hip the you know, the state of the hip hop culture, it's almost like there's a, a, a an age gap to where, you know, like you can be relevant. And then we're pushing for younger talent to, to be around. So my, my question, you know, to you is, and by you having, you know, like the, 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 the status of 
being behind the microphone for a radio station and and also to you know being a, a an influencer you know and being a rap artist wow. like mm-hmm. what what it what will it take for us you know to not to i'm gonna just say this what will it take for us to remove this type of you know message that you know rap is for the younger age like how can it's we two things like real, two real, things. real quick, like how yeah, how can we you know continue to honor our legends without you know putting them you know um quote unquote like in the hip hop casket casket like they're all you know they're gone Set them off the pasture. they're not gone yeah like you know like how can we how can we continue to evolve their 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 status you know while we're still here and moving on and in the in the culture of hip hop. I think the craziest thing is that the answer is so simple, but nobody realizes it, right? The reason that hip-hop is a young man's sport is because it's the youngest genre. Right. So we haven't seen hip-hop age gracefully past a certain point. Mm. Meaning, like, we haven't seen until the last five years, probably maximum, 40-year-old rappers that still look good, still getting money, still put out quality product, and move and shake and operate within this field in other ways that you can look forward to being an older rapper. Right. That's first. So, like, it's it's like you talk about rock and roll. We have been in rock and roll. They took that over over 80 years ago. Like, that's been around for a long time. Yeah, that's Hip-hop fact. and rap as a genre is very young when you think about genres. Like, the fact that we're talking about rockers that's 80 years old. Can you name me an 80-year-old former rapper? No. It don't exist yet. Mm-mm. Like, we haven't gotten there. The other part is <clears throat> it's it's twofold. They um they shrink our genre. When you go online, there's 50 different kinds of rap. I mean rock. When you look at hip hop on most platforms, there's rap, hip hop, and there's two other variations or something. Maybe you might get four or five different kinds of rap choices. Right. Or hip hop choices. And that's part of minimizing our effect when we have the biggest genre in the world right now we've outsold and outproduced rock for a while now they just now are making us aware of it because they yeah. can't hide the numbers anymore yeah so if that's true then our contracts should look like those contracts that those rockers have totally our agree. rappers are still getting rap contracts if you keep getting rap contracts you're not motivated to perform till you 70 years old Right. Like rock dudes, I forget who it was. They said they told it was a rapper that said the rockers told him, like, you guys put out an album every year. He said, We put out an album when we feel like it, and we just tour. And the label waits for us. I believe it. I, and I won't be and surprised it's different. The stones, yeah. That'll make you have a different motivation to work. Look, or you too. <laughs> like you too. <laughs> like, I, I wouldn't be surprised. Like Bro, it is what it is. It's like they go tear up the road and the label doesn't 360 deal them and none of that. They getting all that money, but they know when they come back, they're going to drop and sell from two to five to 10 million and they'll be fine. Right. But we don't get that, even though we're doing those numbers now. I mean, even our highest acts aren't getting rock deals, bro. Mm. Not at all. Like you literally have to be um, <laughs> one of the people on the board at the label to get a real check out the label. You got to be an artist and a CEO. Yeah, I, I I believe it. And and what's crazy, like the only artist right now from a hip hop level that's probably on a verse who could potentially do that is probably Hov. I mean, you got Hov's and you got like, bro, Drake. <laughs> yeah, is an alien dog. Like yeah. what he's been able to accomplish is Michael Jackson ish. True, true. In a lot of ways, and I don't want to discredit because a lot of people say that and they don't. Mike performed in front of 100,000 million people every time he stepped on stage, it seemed like, and wore a mask a long time before we thought that it was necessary because he was right. doing such. So, right. like, we're not going to discredit, like, impact. But, I mean, as far as sheer, like, putting numbers on the board. Right. Number one after number one after whatever. The, the, when it's more competitive now, when it's, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I, I mentioned. Uh, he's a different animal. Right. Like, I, I mentioned Hole because no matter what whether or not if he would even put out a new record or not if he said he's going on tour it's going to sell out no matter yeah, what and he has power 
Right, exactly. Yeah. He's a boss in a lot of different ways, so right. it's going to be what it's going to be. Yeah. Right. And and quite frankly, like Drake, he's definitely going to reach that status no matter what because I I feel like Drake Drake got the cheat code because no matter how younger the person is, I I got a quote from uh, I love this movie, uh, Days and Confused. My man, he was like, he said, no matter how he said, like, I get older, the girls they they stay the same age. They're, they they gonna they gonna like that music regardless, no matter what, because like Real? he got that appeal, you know. Melodies the universal too. You don't have yes. to know how to speak a language to catch a melody. Right. It, it, exactly, and. I think Drake he he does have the cheat code to that. Mm -hmm. I believe that, and like I'm not the biggest Drake fan, just of a shared content. Like, right? I can't really relate, but um, I respect what the hell is going on. I see you. Okay. <laughs> I, absolutely, I see it. Ab absolutely. It, like for, for all for all of them, you know. Mm -hmm. Like I see it, but I mean, I think that we're coming into a space now where we're not competitive as far as wealth. But we have a lot more people that have it and that have influence that know how to use it now. Like everything's transitioning. Like, you know what I mean? The athlete is transitioning, same as hip hop. Like right. we went from being mad at Jordan to damn LeBron and trying to be Martin Luther King. Right. Like we're all evolving. We just got to see how to do it. Bro, you know, this is taped on a Sunday. You watch NFL on Sunday before they go to commercial. It's rap music. It's all of it. You go to Bro. CBS, you go to NFL, it's it's rap music. All, all rap around. music took over Broadway. Yes. It's a little thing called Hamilton. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good call. And this is something that I want to own because, like I say, I'm sure you got various people that listen to your platform. If you're an artist and you dope, you know how to perform, you know how to write, Battle Rappers is perfect for this kind of thing. Right. Pay attention to the fact that Hamilton did numbers. Mm -hmm. Hip-hop Rap music is the number one genre in the world. If you are nice with it, there is going to be a lot of productions that are going to need people like you, and you can make some real money. Real money. You can write. You can teach people how to be believable. You can do all. You can act possibly, but there's a lot more that's going to be available than just going in the booth and hoping you get signed, hoping you get a tour, hoping you go viral. Right. You'll be able to be behind the scenes and get some real bags if you keep your eyes open and you build relationships and pay attention to what's going on right now. Because right. it's about to be 10 more Hamiltons that are probably three of them might be better than that, John. I, I agree. I, I totally agree. I, I feel <laughs> like I feel like the hip hop culture is actually gonna gonna trump, you know what I mean, like the the rock, the alternative rock. Because quite frankly, if you even look at, you know, for what they even consider as pop, it's hip hop. Everything. We're the only genre that you could fold every other genre into, too, because we're exactly. the only genre that's based off sampling. Yes, yes, I I exactly. Like, man, mm -hmm. like, it, you so know, I could get a rock fan, I could get a country fan, I could get a blues fan to like certain things over here because it's still tied together. Right, yeah. Like, they're like, oh, they got that guitar there. Like, oh, man, I love it. <laughs> like, look, it, it'll take an instrument for them to get on board. You know? Yeah, seriously. Um, I did Dane Ready with, um, Corey Williams a few years ago, but we just put the video out recently and people was like, so the John with the live band, like, how did you like, and it's like, man, when I go in the booth, I'm trying to catch a vibe. Right. And when that man laid that hook, I said, oh, all I got to do is get crazy. We about to have fun. And I did something I never did before. I did the same thing when I did reggaeton and Dembo records. I don't speak Spanish. <laughs> But I got, you, I got on there and put my energy on there, and I actually um arranged one of the records completely and told them exactly where I wanted them at, what pockets I needed them in, and it's just like, this is expression, man. <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> like, like, like it's not a, it's it's not something to overthink. It's something to feel. Right. It's something to feel. So when you, you know, it's uh, I don't know. Tangent. My bad. No, no, you know, you good, you good. But yeah, no, yeah, like yeah. it. Like it, 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 it varies for some, but at the end of the day, it's hip hop. It's hip hop. <laughs> yeah. It's hip hop. It's like, no matter how I, how, no matter what my intentions was, what I do on it is still hip hop because I'm hip hop. Right. I exactly. Because yeah. I'm hip hop. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know nothing else. <laughs> what I tell people, I say, I speak a little bit of French, a lot of English, whole lot of Ebonics. Look. 
that, that's another, <laughs> that's another t-shirt there right there like you could do it for like from the percentage wise you know what i mean 10 percent. that'd be hard you know what heavy. I, mean? I like that Look, I, I do the circle right exactly the diagram. and then put on, <laughs> put on the back whole lot of hip-hop <laughs> whole lot <laughs> That's heavy. Nah. I like it. I like yeah, it. Man. But nah, but hey, hey Sammy, th- this was dope, man. Before we close out, I-, I I love asking people this. You know, being able to if you can channel yourself to go back to young Sammy, like mm-hmm. what would what would you tell your younger self? Or w- what would you tell somebody that's you know inspired to become an artist or to work in the media entertainment industry? Like what would you be able to, to tell them? to be like their their go-to to start to be able to evolve going forward go mm. don't um don't second guess especially if you're young because you got your whole life to figure it out but the earlier you start the more you'll figure out like we just said earlier but it's like I always think about that day when my mom was taking me to middle school and i asked her how she would feel if i became a rapper and she hated rap music so her response was less than encouraging right but at the same time if i'd have been a rapper and i'd have did anything she'd have still supported me and loved me <laughs> like it wouldn't have made no difference but right <laughs> i thought it wouldn't be sufficient to what she was um what she valued but later in life i realized like i put out a song a video in a strip club my mom showed her church friends oh wow <laughs> i could have been doing this shit. you know what i mean but like it is what it is man so i just say go don't hesitate but always make sure that you treat people right and you keep your mind on networking always network always treat people decent and you'll be able to figure shit out that you can't figure out because somebody will figure it out for you Right. They'll recognize what your strong suit is and they'll present you with something. And if it's worth it to you, you'll wind up somewhere that you've never been before. Mm. That's that's a big gem there. But that's key, man. Like, you got to go. Got to go. Got to go. It. Just go, man. Yeah. Just go. Be smart, but go. Like, don't be too smart to outsmart yourself out of doing. Right. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Strategic is one thing. Bullshit is another. Mm-hmm. That's a fact. <laughs> that's a fact. Big fact. That's a big fact right there, man. Yeah, because people use them interchangeably. No, I'm figuring it out. All right, well, like, we ain't gonna make a million waiting on a million. Exactly. Like, are you are you <laughs> like are you figuring out to execute or are you figuring out just to try to figure it out? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, to, to or or just so, you know, or or you wait until it's most comfortable. Right, it, it, exactly. because who knows when most comfortable? You know, how I many people plan for this year. You know, how I many people open shit at the beginning of this year and had shit scheduled to open in the middle of this year. Right, I believe. You know it. what I mean? Like, yeah. man, go when you can, because you never know. Piggybacking off of um, um, from what Danny Palmel said when I when I talked to him, like as far as like one of his quotes was, "Be, be comfortable being uncomfortable," and like. I felt that I'm like, you know what, you know, especially with everything that has been going on, you know, with this year, actually, you know what I mean? Within this past year, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Outside of, you know, just doing this and personally, mm-hmm. like, it's like, that's real, man. Like, that's really a, a life message that we all have. Uh, to, it's a real know, thing. It's similar. With- what Will Smith said recently, um, don't, don't do things out of, don't operate out of fear. Right. But if you're going to be fearful, you might as well do the shit scared. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, man. Like shoot. something to that effect. Yeah. Right. But no, he's exactly right. Cause I'm, I don't know if did you watch the uh the reunion special that was on? I HBO? did. I had a ball too, man. Yeah. That was. Oh man, it was great. Like because <laughs> cause, cause, cause technically he didn't want to do that audition to get the Fresh Prince on, you know, on the mat. What like, I just tell you, somebody mm-hmm. will put you somewhere because they see something in you that you don't even see for yourself. He got snatched into that. Quincy yes. put him in pressure at a party. Yeah. I, I know niggas that have records that everybody's told them that they love. And if we ask them to perform in front of that group of people, they not doing the record, bro. Mm-hmm. This man had to do something he never did before, wasn't even interested in just because he was rolling with the guy, and the guy, he, he trusted him. Yeah. He told him two weeks. He said, give me two weeks to get ready. He said, you need two weeks? <laughs> give me 10 minutes, man. Yeah, he's like, give me 10 minutes. <laughs> no, but that's what makes Will Will. 
Right. The fact that even though his first mind said two weeks when it probably his mouth said two weeks when he probably thought three months. But when that man looked at him and said, this is what we doing. He said, you know what? Let me take a couple deep breaths and piss. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be right back. And look, look, little did you know Quincy went right out there. All right, we got an audition about to take place. <laughs> like, yo, it's going down. And, like, And six, six years later. Mm-hmm. They they had a classic on their hands. Yeah, one of the best shows you know, on television. Like, a prime time on television. <laughs> bro, you used to wait all day to watch that shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You'd be outside and be like, um, it's almost yeah. And everybody would go in the house. Yep. Like, and yo, go watch the same thing. That Martin looked yep. like Yeah, Look, man. I still remember it. Like that like that's how much it affected my childhood. It was Fresh Prince <laughs> in the house with LL Cool J. Yep, in the house. Yep, the nine o'clock Monday Night Raw wrestling. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. that, that yeah, was my, that was my Monday. This, this was great, man. Yeah, I had this a ball, was, man. This, this was this was real, really, 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 really great, man. Like, I, no, I need to get you on my platforms, man. I don't even want to interview you. I'm gonna get you the co-host. Oh, for sure. Like, <laughs> hey, look, look, let, look. Let me know who won, and look, hey, look, I, I, I do my work. Like, look, I just be the guy. Like, hey, so uh, back in 1987, you did, but uh, you know. <laughs> Some real shit. The two that I have right now, man, it's it's more laid back than that. It's easy going. It's kind of similar to this. Like you yeah. had questions for me, but we've just been chopping it up. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I think that part of what my goal was with sipping with Sammy platform was to show the art of conversation. Exactly. Interaction. And that's politicking. Politicking is is the conversation. It's the chat. You know what I mean? Like right. some people, you know what I mean? Like if you really don't know, you hear politics and you're like, oh, is this political? <laughs> like, no, like, no, no. no like, we chopping like, it up. Exactly. This is politicking. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like you, you've heard, yeah. you know, some of our, our great artists said it. Like, yo, yo, we, we politicking. Da, 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 da. Like, mm-hmm. like, yo, this, this is politicking. <laughs> you know, it's building. It's all of the things that great things come from. Right. Exactly. Exactly. You know what I mean? We got to start somewhere. We got to have these conversations. We have to give um, exposure to worthwhile people. Mm-hmm. It's important. Yep. That's a fact, man. Definitely. But before we go, you know what I mean? What, what, on um, some of the platforms that we already got your, your IG, you know, uh, name listed, you know, you can follow yeah, you know, yeah. Sip, Sipping with Sammy, but, uh, any other platforms you, you want to shout out before we go? Like, subscribe, comment on the Sipper with Sammy podcast. That's on every streaming podcast, um, every streaming platform right now. Check me out, and that drops every Thursday at four p.m. My bad, because I love happy hour, so I, I did the four p.m. slot. Um, Flyboy Friday Radio every Friday on Glock Aware Radio, the best happy hour in the world on the greatest station in the nation. That's four to six p.m. on the Glock Aware app, GlockAware.com, or YouTube. Check it out. Um, great times, but um. I got projects out there. I swear. Let's talk about it. They are on all the streaming services. Also, brand new video dropped this last week. Um, depending on when this drops, but I'm pretty sure it's be soon. Okay. Called Porn. Um, Tanira Da Vinci's featuring me. Dope ass concept. She put a mini movie out behind it. She's a cyborg. It's it's, it's next level. Um, very dope. Also dropped a video called They Ain't Ready with Corey Wilms recently. And heads up, I also dropped. On a um on a random. I'm just trying to get these <laughs> visuals out. Got but you. check out Sam Malone, sipping with Sammy. You type you type it into something, something positive should pop up, man. But I also want y'all to tune in and check out Font Productions at P H A N T P H I L L Y on Instagram. Um anything you need. She does my audio visual work, she does consultations, she's been doing the best um virtual concerts that we've been seeing during the pandemic and things like that she's setting all of that up so oh, if you want to get your brand up you want to get your paperwork right holla at font productions at font philly that's p-h-a-n-t p-h-i-l-l-y and shout out to my co-host sunny brick south at on the scene magazine and on the scene magazine is something that i think um one i think you should check out but i also think that i want to connect you with because um it's a positive platform Okay. Everything in there is positive. They cover everything um, as far as aspects of society. And I think that that's the kind of thing that when you waking up after you do your affirmations and your meditation that you rather read than some of this nonsense. Oh, absolutely. <clears throat> definitely. You know, send me a link to that. Uh, I, I, definitely, I got you, bro. I, I want to get to that, man. Like, I'm definitely big on to that, man. So, yeah. So this was a, another edition of Politic and with Hawk, episode four with F- with Sam Malone, a.k.a. Yeah. With Sammy. 
Till the uh-huh. next time, again, we'll holler at y'all soon. Peace. My God, man. Appreciate you. Indeed.